Yes, it's another tube from the weird department. This is a Stromberg Carlson Charactron. It's a five inch CRT. And wow, is it long. This is important because these Charactrons were used for some of the very earliest computer graphics. Um, now, I'm sure most or all of you have seen Fran's video on the Nemo tube. The Nemo, of course, was a little numeric indicator, a tiny little CRT that could display 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, basic numbers. And how that worked was by deflecting uh, the electron beam from a tiny little gun through a mask, a metal mask, that would shape the beam into the shape of the number and display it on the phosphor. She does a very good job of, of explaining how it works. So go look at the video again. This is basically a slightly earlier idea and contains a whole bunch of characters. You basically a character set. In fact, if you look at if we look at the uh, the tag here, let's see if I bring bring that over here. Shaped beam tube. Characteron. Unfortunately, the part number is not filled in there, but it also says five inch P eleven, so it must be P eleven. Uh, Nineteen sixty. Anyway, much the same thing is happening here. Let's be careful here. We have a. Uh, Pretty standard looking electron gun. And you can just see some deflection plates there. But roughly in this shielded portion, which unfortunately, well, it blocks the fun bits, um, is a mask, a metal mask, just like the Nemo tubes. And uh, it's got alphanumeric characters and basic shapes. And just like the Nemo tube, you make a beam with the gun, you deflect it to go through one of the cutouts of the metal mask. It would shape the beam into the character. Then further along, you magnetically deflect roughly around there. And guess what? You get the shaped character on the screen here. And basically, you would just do all this, def this deflection all over the place. And you could, well, basically get a message out there. Now, if you wanted to do um, actual vector graphics, well, you just pick a, a, uh, a simple shape that just allows a, a tiny dot. And hey, you can deflect it as a normal vector. You know, I suppose you could deflect the, uh, like a, a letter F or something like that, but I don't know how useful that would be. Now, these things are important in history because they were used with some of the first computer graphics. And Stromberg Carlson did indeed make some graphic printers. Uh, the SC line, SC3000, SC4020, uh, and very similar things, just in the late 50s, early 60s. And instead of, well, you could make graphics, you know, directly onto the tube here. What they actually would do is point this at a microfilm recorder and expose the microfilm. So when you see, when you see a video of one of these things in operation, and believe it or not, I think somewhere on YouTube there is an old Stromberg Carlson training film that uh, shows one of these tubes working is, well, you only really have to expose each character or line of your vector of your graphics once. So these huge printers would read a tape generated by your computer or whatever and just come up with a vector list. And in that vector list would be, well, characters. And it would just draw everything out once. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get like a real picture on these things because it only drew everything once, exposed it to film, and then you took the film canister out and you, well, developed it as you would with any other microfilm. Now, uh, I don't know of any of those Stromberg Carlson uh, printers still existing. I've uh, 
asked Al at BitSavers if he has any manuals for any of that stuff. Because it would be interesting to try and get this thing running. Now, from what I read, getting one of these, uh, one of these uh, Characterons running, one of those printers running, oh, difficult, difficult task. Um, apparently they're incredibly finicky, incredibly finicky. And uh, this, obviously, it needs a whole lot of circuitry to get, you, to, to get it to work. You need two types of deflection. There's, I'm sure this works at a pretty high voltage. You can see uh, there's, there's the high voltage uh, connection right there. Um, it'd be neat to get this thing running, but let's face it, it's gonna, that's, that's, that's a project way, way, way down the line. I don't even have data for this tube. Uh, hey, if any of you have data for these uh, uh, Characterons, uh, originally they were uh, made by Convair, uh, invented by Convair, I believe. Then Str uh, Stromberg Carlson took, uh, took it over, and it, it lasted, uh, I don't know when these things were actually out of service, but um, I think Stromberg Carlson was probably the biggest user of these. Uh, if anyone has uh, a, a data sheet, it'd be interesting to to get this thing running, see if I can actually make a character on the screen. But, you know, well, for one, I don't even know if this is a good tube. The getter looks good, but, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know what the connections are. You know, maybe some of the some of the uh, pinout uh, on the base. It's a standard CRT base, by the way. Maybe standard, but probably there's a bunch that aren't standard <laughs> who knows so yes this is another call for information if you've got data on the character on tubes and uh eventually maybe i can get this thing to play one interesting thing there is a related tube there are actually a couple of uh related tubes one is called the uh matricon i believe it's called and instead of a mask uh, in here that, that shapes the beam, you know, to look like a character. It was actually a matrix of electrodes. And it was like a uh, five by seven or so matrix of pixels, each one apparently with its own little grid that you could turn on and off and come up with an arbitrary character set. I have zero information on that other than what I just told you. Uh, I don't know who made them. I don't have one. It'd be real neat to find one of those tubes. Um, there was also the Typotron, which is perhaps a little more famous because they were used in the Sage terminals. They were huge, huge tubes, and they were extremely similar, except they were storage. So basically... You could throw a character or whatever up on the on the phosphor, and it'd stick there. And uh, I actually do have one of those tubes. I think it's a, what, 6577 maybe? I don't recall the number offhand. Um, yeah, it's, it, you'd see the, you see them on the Sage consoles, or Sage uh, um, terminals, uh, up in the corner. There's the big tube, of course. And then... Oh, if you look up top, there's the smaller tube, which is, I think, called the message display or something like that. Very similar tube, although it is the storage version of this. And it's got more pins, too. Um, and I just thought, I wonder if they're similar enough that if I could find some old Sage documentation for those consoles, which I think that information is out there, that might have some uh, relevant data for this tube, or at least the pinout might be worth looking into. Anyway, Characteron. So a lot of that graphics you saw in the, you see anyway from the from the early 60s was made on one of these tubes. Uh, interesting process. The printers are amazingly huge. Uh, I saw a picture of an SC SC4020 and uh, it's about five racks plus a tape drive, <laughs> uh, either a seven or a nine track tape drive. Big, big machine. And it's kind of neat. They have these tubes actually, I guess, for calibration or something like that. You could swing them out of the rack and, and take a look at them while they're in operation. And of course, you swing them inside to uh, do the exposure to the microfilm. Uh, so, okay. Well, anyway, 
like I said, another weird tube. And uh, I'll try and dig more of these fun, fun weird tubes out that I have. Sorry this is not entirely a visually exciting tube to look at because they hid everything. But I did want to show it off and it related a little bit to the Nemo tube because that seems to be getting some attention lately. And yeah, it, this is kind of a uh, super Nemo tube. <laughs> Alright, like this if you like the video. Maybe share, subscribe, and uh, comment. And hey, if you have a data sheet on either the, the this particular tube here, whatever number it is, because remember it doesn't have the number filled out in the, uh, in the little um, uh, data tag uh, near the base there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, if you have a data sheet, I'd love to see it. Or if you have any data on the uh, SC series of printers from Stromberg Carlson, I'd love to see, uh, well, I'd love to see schematics, but I'd love to see almost anything about those printers. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye.